Hello, my name is Christian Smart, and I'm going to discuss project risk management. The focus of this presentation is on resource risk, that is cost and schedule risk. Technical risk is also important, but I'm going to focus on resource risk because in my experience, it's a bigger issue. Relative to technical risk, it is underappreciated, it is often ignored, it is not analyzed well, and this needs to be fixed. One of the key ideas I would like for you to take away from this presentation is that projects are always riskier than you expect, even taking into account that they are riskier than you expect. Computer programs to play chess were first developed in the 1950s. The belief was that in 10 years, a computer program would be able to defeat the world champion. That didn't happen, but this prediction was continually updated to always be about 10 years away. And eventually did occur in the 1990s. Inspired by this example in the late 1970s, the cognitive scientist Douglas Hofstadter, pictured there on the right, coined Hofstadter's law, which states it always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstadter's law. As time is money, Hofstadter's law also applies to costs. A similar law applies to risk because of entropy. Entropy is the tendency towards disorder in the universe, more can and does, go wrong than go right. A good example of this is my son was sitting in his high chair a few months ago and tossed a dinner plate to the floor, breaking it into several pieces. There was little he could do to the plate to make it better, but there was quite a bit he could do to make it much worse, as he demonstrated. Due to entropy, a similar law applies to risk. It is hard to appreciate entropy, and it is hard to appreciate risk. As a result, we tend to underestimate it. Because of my experience in risk management for defense and aerospace projects, I've written this book to highlight the issue that projects are risky, that the risk needs to be analyzed quantitatively, and it needs to be done better. Projects are inherently risky. Projects of all types, large and small, frequently experience significant costs and schedule and growth. My background, my background is in defense and aerospace, and working with McGraw-Hill to publish my book, they asked me to broaden the focus to look at all types of projects. And in looking at all types of projects, I found that what I'd seen for defense and aerospace applied universally. This cost growth that, that occurs is strong evidence, not only of risk, but lack of proper risk management. Despite its importance, risk is often considered to be just another four letter word. This risk needs to be analyzed quantitatively. However, the application is fraught with obstacles. My book discusses these issues and discusses ways to do it better. It's written for a general project management audience and is now available for pre-order through Amazon. Edward Deming stated, in God we trust, all others bring data. This slide discusses the history of cost and schedule growth and encapsulates some of that history and shows that it's a legacy of disaster. It occurs for all types of projects across a variety of industries. It's frequent, it's high, the average growth is high, and extreme growth occurs regularly. Cost growth in excess of 100% is a common occurrence in most projects. Cost and schedule growth occur for a variety of reasons, both internal and external. I consider optimism to be the cardinal sin of project management. It's due to innate biases, but is so ingrained, it's been likened to a cult. The People's Temple cult led by Jim Jones committed mass suicide in the 1970s by drinking cyanide lace Kool-Aid. So the urge to resist project management optimism is encapsulated by the phrase, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Cost and schedule growth also occurs due to misalignment of cost, schedule, and technical requirements. Like a three-legged stool, all need to be consistent in order to balance. Moore's Law, which is the consistent exponential growth in technology that has been occurring for decades, paired with projects that take a decade or longer to complete, means that there is either a continual requirements update process or the product will be obsolete on delivery. Black swans are unpredictable, rare, and unprecedented events that have a huge impact. And sometimes, Cost and schedule growth are due to more mundane reasons like poor performance. Unlike the children of late Wobegon, not all project managers and project staff are above average. A few key examples of 
programs that have had significant costs and schedule growth are the James Webb Space Telescope, which is planned to be launched next year. It is NASA's next generation space telescope. It's highly complex, but leadership was optimistic in planning at the very beginning. MOSES is the city of Venice's flood prevention project. It's that city's uh, project. Uh, the, the city in Italy with all the canals. It's taken so long to develop that it's already obsolete and it's, has, it is two years away from completion. The California High Speed Rail Project, which was designed to link Los Angeles and San Francisco, has now been descoped to connect only two smaller cities. This mega project, which costs in the tens of billions of dollars, is a mega waste. The Sydney Opera House, a much older project, began construction without a detailed plan in place, resulting in a 14-fold increase in costs. It's 14 times initial plan cost was the actual cost. So um, that was a, it's a huge increase, one of the highest in history. It also had a decade-long schedule delay, one of the longest in history. All this means that cost and schedule risk analysis is imperative. It's a must, not an option. There's a great deal of resource risk, and it is not sufficient to develop a single point estimate of cost or schedule. As Sam Savage points out in his book, The Flaw of Averages, Projects that are based on averages are, on average, behind schedule and beyond budget. This analysis needs to be quantitative. Qualitative risk assessments, assessments result in a significant underestimation of risk. The results of risk analysis are typically displayed as an S-curve, as depicted there on the right. So in this example, there is an 80% probability that the cost will come in at or below $120. As my mentor, Steve Book, used to say, repent while there is still time, start doing cost and risk analysis now. I discussed several issues with risk analysis in my book, and I'm gonna discuss one of these here in this presentation and close with that. And that is the reliance on S-curves and risk analysis is flawed. It only measures risk, it does not provide any risk management, and the consequence of extreme events is ignored. On old maps, Uncharted areas were often depicted with a, a monster or a dragon. The phrase, here be dragons, appears on an old globe. This acknowledges that in, in uncertain areas or unknown areas, there is a lot of uncertainty and even risk. And in these tales of distribution, when they are ignored, projects are ignoring the, the dragons of risk. Consequence is more important than likelihood. And that's illustrated by Pascal's wager. Blaise Pascal was a mathematician. He came up with this idea of a, of a wager of should you bet on God, the existence of God or not. Even if the perceived likelihood of God's existence is low, the consequence of unbelief, if he exists, is huge. This leads to the idea that a rational better should bet on God. Percentile funding also leads to the log normal paradox. The log normal is riskier than the normal distribution but when funding the low levels, which is at the 84, 44th percentile or low, or the 84% confidence level, the normal is riskier than the log normal. Confidence levels do not take tail risk into account, so they're not coherent. Coherent measures of risk take into account tail risk and provide risk management. A couple of examples are expected shortfall and semi-deviation. So the other key idea I would like for you to take away from this presentation is that funding to a percentile is like Russian roulette. Consequence is more important than likelihood. Keep that in mind. Thank you for your time today. A little bit about me on this chart and my contact info, info is there at the bottom. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you for your time.